the soon-to-be colossal fail, which we know was the Epic Game Store, continues cranking out hits, or I should say L's. I tried telling y'all before, but maybe this time y'all will listen. Let's get into it. What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? What's up, peoples? It is your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Do me a favor, before we get too deep into this one, hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when your boy's dropping these doses. I appreciate all of y'all straight up, because I'm not too proud to ask. Okay, let's try this again, because we've done this before. We've been here before, people. Let me just provide you a drop, backdrop here of what's going on with the Epic Games Store. People think that the Epic Game Store is a great sign of competition. <laughs> but however, would that be the case? With that being the case, excuse me. PC gamers, the gaming community most affected, feels otherwise. Console gamers and haters of the PC community don't understand why that PC gaming community, the PC gaming community, does not relish in the Epic Store's presence. To them, Epic Store represents competition, the type they see as fruitful to consoles. However, that type of service provided by entities like Epic and Steam are way different from what's offered by a game service provider such as Microsoft or PlayStation with Sony, or Sony with PlayStation, okay? So all this was inspired by a tweet and I want big ups to my homie, my homie Neethals. AKA L DeBarge. <laughs> I call him that because, man, he, he, he caught a big L with this one. My man, no, no, that's my bro. That's my bro. Um, he, we've been going back and forth over the Epic Game Store, and there's, he, he, he saw somewhere to where a game that's on the Epic Game Store uh, had, um, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, cloud saves. One of the big proponents that I said, which was missing from the Epic Game Store, which was an epic fail, which is cloud saves again. He saw that cloud saves was active and he saw the tweet and he ran with it and he stumbled with the cake in his hand and fell right flat on his face, right? <laughs> because the problem is, even though cloud saves was enacted on that particular game, nobody knows what the hell that game is. And Tim Sweeney himself, and the ultimate liar of all liars next to Bobby Kotick of Activision came out and said, hey, this is uh, just only active for a few new games and some games and we still got a lot of work to do, right? But my question is, and why can't one of the most financially astute entities, which is Epic, eight months later after the release of this store still can't supply servers to a not cloud save fully? Come on, man. Epic is just greedy and full of lives. Lies. And they're non-committed wholeheartedly to the PC gaming community. That's why the PC gaming community is in the uproar. So let's just break down these problems. First and foremost, Epic Game Store is a storefront, okay? They are a storefront and a retailer, not a goods or product provider. A goods or product provider, AKA Xbox, PlayStation and Nintendo provide you with specific products that they create or at least they license from the get-go and they help fund those products. During the funding of these products early on, you know the norms of what to expect from said product as far as who to get it from around the time, you know, unless something happens um, as far as the release dates and if, and if a release date changes, you know who to go to as far as communication goes. You know who to go to to purchase said item from the get, right? The, the cornerstone of the product is established from the beginning. You know what I'm saying? The home base of that product is established from the get-go. In addition, the closed off nature of selling a product like this, like, you know what I'm saying? A good, like a PlayStation or an Xbox or a Nintendo Switch, you know what I'm saying? The closed off nature of that at the core represents exclusivity. I want to bring you to that product, that particular product within an overarching realm. So in order for you to come to my product, you know what I'm saying? My specific product, what I'm selling you is niche. 
I'm selling you a niche. Well, I don't want to say a niche product, but I'm selling you a niche item within uh, a, a global spectrum of an entire business line, right? So because I'm selling you this a la carte item, rather, I need to have some exclusivity to it. That's common when you're selling a product, okay? Now, Epic and Steam stores are exactly that. They're storefronts. Storefronts are too. You know what I'm saying? And they can have exclusive products, ones that they help fund though and help create and are not common commodities. However, ultimately, stores main benefit is to help flourish access to third party common goods and services. They distinguish themselves or make themselves stand out, not by making third party goods and services exclusive to them at some massive level, like what Epic is trying to do, but they do so by having certain perks of you going to them to buy said item. Those perks can be related to technology, pricing, or just altogether accessibility. Storefronts defeat the purpose of their usefulness and their existence to the public when they make access, which is key to their existence, access more difficult or in a worser state. Let me give you two examples. Let's use one of our favorite retailers or our favorite storefronts, GameStop. <laughs> Let's just say first and foremost, GameStop said, you know what? We're in trouble as a brick and mortar. Here's what we're gonna do. The existing little bit of cash and duffels we have left, we're going to go to Borderlands, the makers of Borderlands, which is Gearbox. We're gonna go to Call of Duty. We're gonna go to EA, the makers of Madden, and we're gonna drop all this money on them and we're gonna say, hey, for six to eight months, make your product only exclusive to our store after release. And they do this two weeks before the game's release, right? After you've already put down maybe a, a, a down purchase at another store, maybe you went to Walmart and you pre-ordered it or you pre-ordered it online or you pre-ordered it through your console maker, your favorite console maker, wherever you decided to play it. Two weeks before that, GameStop says, uh, uh, uh you gotta buy the game exclusively from us for six to eight months. That would piss y'all off, right? Maybe some of you wouldn't piss off. It's competition, MM2K, and GameStop has to exist. Okay, well, let's put it like this. Okay, so let's just say again, said game, um, which is, let's say your favorite PlayStation or Xbox exclusives, no matter how rare <laughs> Xbox exclusives may be in the eyes of, of the public, right? Let's just say that an Xbox exclusive like Gears 5 or a PlayStation exclusive like The Last of Us 2. Let's just say if GameStop approaches Sony and Microsoft, is, it drops off a duffel bag of money and says, hey, we want those games to be exclusively bought from our store. And on top of that, they can't use your feature of game chat or whatever. They can't use PlayStation Network or Xbox Live to connect with their friends, but they gotta use GameStop, you know what I'm saying? The GameStop device, okay? In order to connect with their friends. And the GameStop device is a crappy, buggy, awful, and malware written, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Malware and spyware written uh, application that you gotta use to communicate with your friends in game. How would y'all like that? That effectively is what's happening with the Epic Game Store. They're not helping develop these games and make them flourish and make them a better experience for the consumer. But at the last minute, they're sweeping in at the middle of the night and they're saying, oh, here goes some money, make it exclusive to our store. They're not helping PlayStation or Xbox improve the technology with their, with their, uh, their live chats and all other stuff. But that's what they're doing. The features that have come common with you they're taking, they're stripping away and saying, you can just wait. It's exclusive to our store. This is just competition. Now, would you like that console gamer? I think not. So again, the overarching theme is that if you're a storefront, your main uh, function, the, the basis of your existence is access. 
And that's what PC gamers are upset about. You are closing off access and making the gaming experience for the PC gamer worse. As in the same examples that I'm providing you. And if you don't believe me, just look at there's a Polygon article out there that tells you that all of this, the grimy stuff that the Epic Games Store has done, that they've actually apologized for, but continue to do. So with that, know what you're talking about because if Epic Games is successful with this model, which I don't believe they are, I hope they're not. But again, I, I'm not a fortune teller. If they're successful, guess what? They're gonna find something grimy and greedy to do on consoles. And because they have so much success and they got the backing of casuals, if this, if this becomes successful, they're gonna be able to do it to you too, all right? So stop with all this console or platform worn stuff and just trying to troll people and, 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 and trying to uh, cap for certain things that are not of your benefit because it's only a matter of time. If they scamming us on Monday, they coming to you. They coming for you by Tuesday. And that's it from your boy MM2K. And hey, let me know what you think what I, about what I had to say in the comment section below. Like I always tell you, you can come with me or come at your boy. It doesn't matter. But if you did like what I had to say, let me know what you think in the comment section below. And you can catch me in the corner every boulevard. Check out the links below to follow me. And y'all do a show with your peoples. Neethals, Dirt Griggity, Snow Bunny. It's done on Dirt Griggity's channel. It's called Scram Punks. Look up hashtag Scram Punks for more information on that. And last but not least, follow my brother on the Broadband Bullies. We all are doing the damn thing. Check out that Discord. Check out that Patreon. And check out the link to the gear because it's flying. Oh, I almost forgot. Check out your boy on the new channel of his, the Hard Knock Digital Culture, where we're highlighting hardcore games, hardcore gritty media, which includes martial arts, movies, uh, shows, and anime. You definitely don't want to miss it. And with that being said, now I hope you all feel educated. You guys all have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day. Peace.